Navy. Well, Kenya and South Africa are often top of mind for travellers keen on an African safari. But landlocked Zambia is increasingly luring adventurers with promises of fewer crowds, luxurious cans and abundant and diverse wildlife. Well, travel writer Nina Karnikowski has just returned from Zambia and joins us now to tell us a bit about it. Nina, great to have your company on the show. My pleasure. Tell us a bit about this because it does differ, right, from the, the mainstream safari destinations of, of like Kenya and, and South Africa. It certainly does. And I mean, it is attempting to position itself that way. And it really is this luxury destination. I went with a company called Bench International who really focus on that high-end luxury glamping experience and let me tell you there's plenty of it there. We stayed in these insane camps where you know there's Bedouin style tents, there's private plunge pools, there is fine food and even finer wine, there is everything you could ever want and also the really fantastic thing is that they all have really wonderful guides there who can show you around and uh, take you to the hot spots for the wildlife. So let's tell us a bit more about these camps. Let's start with um, Chinzombo. It looks very luxurious. <laughs> yes, I think that was the most luxurious one that I went to. And uh, so that's part of the Norman Carr Safari Company, which of course was started by the famous conservationist Norman Carr. So there is a certain standard there. And uh, the interiors of this place were what really got it for me. It was all raw wood, leather, just everything was sort of sustainable. It's these gorgeous big tents that actually managed to have air conditioning in them. <laughs> um, they're really just gorgeous. All the colors have got these beautiful um, curtains everywhere that are flowing in the breeze. It's really, uh, it, it's a special experience did, there. Did, did you find much time to lounge around? in those in no, those <laughs> I certainly didn't. I mean, they have this uh, siesta time, right? You go out for your morning drive, you come back for your morning tea. You're meant to have this siesta, but of course, you want to go through all your photos, yeah. you get fabulous photos, and then it's time for the afternoon game drive and the G&T to watch the sunset. You don't want to <laughs> miss that. Because, Nina, you start pretty early, don't you? You start at 5.30 in the morning. Someone knocks on your door <laughs> with a cup of tea, and up you get. You're out there by 6.30. It's, it's all go from there. Now I know you were there for a very special experience. Were you? Did you actually? This video went viral um, of the little elephant. I'll let you tell it. But um, were you there for that? I was. I was in that van, and I took a very similar video. <laughs> uh, we're all sitting there, just cruising along, enjoying the serenity of the afternoon, and then bam. This scene unfolds in front of us, a baby elephant getting attacked by 14 lions. We're watching we, it now, just so you know. Yes, right. So we, we just were horrified at first, thinking, oh my gosh, we're going to witness this poor little baby just see its end. But then this baby elephant turns around, decides enough is enough, and starts charging these lions. And in the end, little Hercules, as we named him after the fact, he got away, and about half an hour later, we saw the lions eating a buffalo, which I'm sorry, but it sort of seemed a little better than the baby elephant. Yeah, I'm glad that elephant didn't have a bad ending, because I really no. we're watching it now. So, um, now the Ch I don't know if I'm going to say this right, but the Chongwe River Camp? The Chongwe River Camp, okay. yes. Now, that was special for a, for a different reason. There are elephants walking through this camp all the time, so you have to have your wits about you when you're walking around, because as one of the staff members said, you know, you do get charged, so you just have to watch out for the staff members doing this, which means that there is an elephant behind you, and you just slowly walk away, and all is fine. They have not had an incident there, they've told me, but uh, that's in the Lower Zambezi, so you also get the very special experience of canoeing down the little channels, and you've got all the hippos and the crocs popping up around you, and you get the little luxury cruising, and we stopped off at a sandbank one morning for our tea break, which was really really amazing. I mean, you're there with your feet in the water thinking, okay, no crops here for sure. Mm. And um, it, it's just wonderful. Um, did Sausage Tree Camp differ much from those ones? 
Uh, well, once again, it was luxury high-end. <laughs> Sausage Tree has been going for a much longer time, uh, but there you go again, the Bedouin-style tents, the pools, beautiful looking over the river. You have the fire at night where you all sit around and tell your tales of everything that you saw during the day. There were conservationists staying there, zoologists, so you get these amazing stories at the end of every day. Nina, before I let you go, I want to ask you, because I know you're quite passionate about this, obviously Ebola has made headlines around the world. How has it been impacting tourism over there in, in your view? Well, look, they have reported that numbers have been going down, which is a real shame because Zambia and the entire region of East Africa have not reported a single case of Ebola. And, you know, the West African nations that have had the Ebola, Sierra Leone, places like that, that's actually closer to London than it is to Zambia. So I really hope that that doesn't deter anyone because I know people were quite alarmed when I said I was going to Africa. All right, Nina, great as always to get your... Um thoughts on, on Zambia. Thank you Ingrid. Nina Karnikowski there. And that is all we have time for on this edition from the team here though. Thanks for your company.